What's up, my man? How Come you on, feeling, bro? bro? Long time, long time. For man. real, man. I remember we was just in the pub hooping, playing ball, right? And oh. we played like travel basketball together too. Facts. Yeah. That's crazy. Always, like seeing each other, like playing basketball and stuff. Uh huh. I was like just thinking to myself before we got started, bro. Like walking in here is this space is crazy, bro. And I was trying to like save my excitement, but from like you just said, somebody from the city, we used to hoop in the pub, like. To this, bro, at this stage of our lives, like, I don't know if you realize the impact of this, bro. This is real big. This is huge. I appreciate that. So I just wanted to give you your flowers, bro. And I think, like, I'm from Southwest, so this is not even my side of town. But just, like, coming to Kensington, like, everybody in Philly, like, we know what that represents. I think, like, where you're located, bro, like, that adds to, I guess, like, the ambiance of this. Because I feel like kids in the city, but most importantly here, like, they need something like this, bro. So I want to know, like, before we get into you know, the intro and all that. What's been your process of, like, building those ties with the local community here? Yeah, I just think, like, just being organic, like, yeah. just being myself. Um, having something that's really tangible, too, mm -hmm. because we really like teaching people you know, how to use a camera. We really teaching photographers. Right. Um, even if, you know, you may wake up like, I think I want a camera or mm -hmm. I like it, but we really turning that into, like, hey, you can really do it. We're showing you, and we're giving you the tools and resources to actually do it. Right. And, you know, putting you on money, too. So, like, actually just, like, doing the work, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, we was able to take a boutique-style studio space and just make it Turn a duty of ours, yeah. of community initiatives, too. And then it just, like, flow together. So, like, who would have thought when I said I want to create a photography studio, they didn't see that community side. But, you know, if you serve the people, you know, the people are going to do good about it. Right. And you're really walking the talk, bro, because, like, I had the opportunity to connect with your intern off the rip. When I walked in here, everything was super organic, super professional. He gave me the greatest tour of this whole thing, explained everything for me, answered any questions I had. And uh, I just appreciate, bro, like, how you're running your business. So, like, and I asked him about his background, too. Like, what led you to want to even intern here? He told me about some of his aspirations in photography and videography. So I like that this is a grassroots place where people could come and like get that experience where otherwise they might have had to go through hula hoops to learn some of those skills. Yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. We skipped the introduction, bro. I was so excited. Yeah. But if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to the people, feel free. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel because so many things that go against us. But it's something inside our spirit that just keep us marching forward. We gon' be alright, uh. We gon' be alright. Yeah. CJ Wolf, um, photographer, camera changed my life. Mm -hmm. um, graduated college as a student athlete. Um, right after that, I did what everybody said to do, even my own mother. Yeah. Um, get a job, and um, that lasted for you know a year and a half. Mm -hmm. I was a financial advisor and working in banking. And um, COVID, I know, you know, a lot of people passed away from it and mm -hmm. a lot of unfortunate things happened. But for me, um, it really, like, slowed me down because I didn't have to be inside the office. Right. And um, two things happened. Um, it made me realize, like, do I want to chase photography mm -hmm. when I was with my NFL clients traveling the world? Or do I want to be a great financial advisor? Right. And I'm just like, there's a way where I can blend two, but I want to put more of my focus on to, you know, being a photographer and building up you know, our studio space. Yeah. So that's where it kind of like came out of. And um, I've just been pushing at that, doing a lot of different creative stuff, you know, me still staying creative mm -hmm. while also, you know, running a business and, you know, building that up. You just said a lot there, bro. And I want to like dive deeper into your story. But before I even get into like how you became to, you know, be who you are today, how do you even get this? Like, what is that process like? Like, how do you go from just having a camera to then mm -hmm. having an entire space. Yeah, I mean, it always been like bigger than me. Mm -hmm. um, even when I was a financial advisor, mm -hmm. like I was trying to get our everyday people that coming from our neighborhoods, like trying to get them life insurance mm -hmm. or invest into the market. Um, but I was always doing that in a creative way. Right. So, you know, I'm a big fan of like EYL, Earn Your Leisure, Earn and your stuff leisure. like that. So like I had that vision then, mm -hmm. um, but I just was kind of, um, like they're doing a great job executing it. Right. But I always wanted to like put creativity and like kind of entertainment and like a hook for our people. Right. Um, onto like the financial literacy part. But working in corporate, I had a lot of um, pushback right. to be able to do that. Because you got to go through certain 
you know, um, loopholes to be able mm-hmm. to get approved for it and stuff. Um, so it taught me a lot of lessons though, yeah. but I just was like, cool, I can, there's no limitations to me if I build my own business right. and I can teach other photographers on what to do, provide the space, and then just bring in my networks of corporations and business and things of that sort into hair. So let me ask you this though. I think it's one thing to invest in yourself. So any one of us can go and buy a camera, Mm -hmm. but I'm saying like purchasing an entire space, Mm -hmm. obviously there had to be some level of investment in you. Yeah. So for people that are looking to, of all industries that's trying to like find somebody to back them Mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be, like speak to how did you cultivate those relationships to where somebody could believe in the vision that you articulated to them oh yeah yeah for sure i had to first like believe in myself Mm -hmm. um i started this with like no money Mm -hmm. um i had five thousand dollars but most of that went to my first last and security of the space just to secure it but i bet it on myself and i'm like you know it's gonna get me through one month right (laughs) and hopefully that next month can get me through and then next (laughs) month and then i build a great relationship with my landlord right and then i renewed the lease and then i said hey let us let's upgrade Mm -hmm. when we upgraded to a 2000 square foot of space from 800 square foot of Mm -hmm. space we doubled our space so of course our rent doubled as well right it was the same exact process in year two. Mm-hmm. That's all I had to secure first, last, and security Damn. in our new space. And I'm like, I just got to get through the next month, right. the next month, the next month. So I kind of like, I stumbled into this mm-hmm. because someone wanted to buy content off of me mm. inside of this building. Okay. And it never really hit me until they wanted to buy content off me. I'm like, damn, I can really make money from this. What do you mean by that content off you? Like, yeah, so I was doing um, vlogs for Will Parks. Okay. Um, currently, I in saw the NFL. Yeah. yeah. So they wanted to place that onto like their streaming channels. Okay. And I'm like, hey, this is a good spot. And then I was talking to Will. I'm like, yo, what if I shoot you inside of the studio? Right. Everything was like on the field mm-hmm. and traveling. I'm like, damn, what if I can bring? Because this is like COVID time. Right. I'm like, what if I can bring my clients here? That'd be dope. So I started this space yeah. just for myself. Right. And then once I started putting it on social media, people were like, yo, can I book it? Yeah. Can I use it? Oh, can you teach me photography? And I'm like, all right, this is bigger than me now. Mm-hmm. And um, this is what people need. Right. It's not what they want. Like, it's what they need. Facts. So I'm like, let me service them. And then, you know, the business just started kind of building itself. So from the outside looking in, I've been watching you for a long time, bro, mm-hmm. like keeping up with, I keep up with all my peers on social media. It looked like you and Will Parks, that was like, that relationship was the catalyst yeah. for a lot of other ventures yeah. and relationships that you yeah. wanted to build. So I just want you to like speak to the importance of that relationship and what that means to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's very important. I kind of, we clicked like the first time, mm-hmm. the first time we met, we actually met at a workout, um, someone a trainer put on social media like, hey, we got to work out NFL guys and D1 guys, um, pull up. I skipped class that day, didn't go, started <laughs> taking photos. And then he hit me up probably like two weeks later, like, hey, I got a family event. Yeah. I um, want you to come out and shoot. So we've been kicking it for like two years or like a year. Yeah. And I'm just in school and I'm shooting, come back and forth from Philly and like, I never asked them for nothing. Right. Like even money when I would come out and shoot, mm-hmm. my gas tank probably be on E or I'm probably hungry or stuff like that. Crazy. I never asked for any money. Um, not because I didn't think, you know, I, I was still working on my craft. Right. So I think, you know, he respected that and um, he understood like I didn't want anything from you. Right. And I knew if I did good with those photos that I was capturing for the opportunity I got from shooting him to his, you know, peers and he got traded to the Eagles. They just came on, came off a of Super Bowl. Right. So like me being around in those rooms and just like soaking up the game and soaking up so much um, information, um, it just turned into like a brotherhood. Right. So now it went from, hey, can you come shoot my mom or my grandmother's party or you know we traveling, to hey I'm gonna put you on this play I'm gonna put you on that. That's fine. So now we just wake up in the morning sometimes, work out probably right. like three times a week. He work out more than that, but like myself, I go to the gym, we just work out, mm-hmm. kick it, and that's it. But um, it really turned into like a brotherhood. 
and um, someone that really like believed in me. Like, I think that's fire, bro. And I think like what I put together from that is like you had to have a certain level of humility mm -hmm. and respect for yourself, respect for your craft, but also respect for the client that mm -hmm. you was dealing with in order for that relationship to blossom from just a simple client relationship to like mm -hmm. a brotherhood. It's something that I noticed with a lot of people, especially now, it's like a certain level of entitlement to mm -hmm. where like you could be in the beginning stages of whatever you're doing and people just have this air or attitude about themselves yeah. like, no, like I ain't doing nothing for free. Yeah. Or like I ain't, like you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I'm not going like that. Yeah. So I want you to speak to that. Like why is that important to just, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have a price tag on your work. But I guess like approaching things with an understanding of the bigger picture of the situation and like the opportunity that could come mm -hmm. if you just, you know, delay that instant gratification in the beginning. Yeah, for sure. It's big. I mean, I still do it now. Mm -hmm. Like I work with a um, sports management company, mm -hmm. like doing their content and stuff. And um, they wanted me. They wanted CJ Wolf. Right. right. They didn't really go through like I want a motor vision agency. Right. They wanted CJ Wolf. So I'm like, cool. We got five, you know, prospects mm -hmm. going to the next level at a high level D1 and right. one committed to Kentucky and other UConn and stuff like that. So it's like knowing like those long <coughs> lasting relationships yeah. and like everyone is going to like use you. Right. But it's about when you start misusing people, that's when it becomes a problem. Mm. And you kind of got to like use people for what you want. And like, you got to have a bigger vision than just now. Right. If your vision now is to get $150 or even $1,000, right. like even $10,000, like that's your vision. You're trying to get over on somebody just to get that real quick and be done with it. You know, it's not really going to like last long because for you sure. know what? Hundred dollars can be going quick. Thousand dollars can be going quick. Even ten thousand yeah. dollars. So it's like, um, what's your? And that always prints you back to like, what's your why? Right. Like, like, why are you doing this? You know. And my why, when I was shooting for free, mm -hmm. was to really like change the culture and like really emphasize on like, we shouldn't be called cameramen. And right. We can add a lot of value. Right. And that's what I did for like a lot of people to like show them like, yo, we're not cameramen. We are professionals. We are creators. Yeah. And, you know, we can add value. So I think people from the city that like really gave life to that idea that you just shared is like, I always heard Wallow say like, yo, get you like a cameraman yeah, yeah. and know how to edit and yep. do all the yep. things. They like Swiss Army nights. Yep, so, like yep. if you rap, whatever you do, every crew needs somebody like, you know, mm -hmm. what you're saying. So I think that's really powerful. One thing I want to ask you, bro, is like, when it came to like the progression of your business to where you are now, um, were there any like slow moments and like, how do you go from point A of like trying to figure out how you're going to make rent to, I'm seeing you now doing photo shoots and commercials with mm -hmm. Foot Locker. So like, I just want you to explain that journey and that process of going from like point A to now you're working with these large corporations and brands and these like professional athletes. Like, how are you processing all that? Yeah, um, for real, for real, it, it's, it's cool and stuff. Yeah. Um, sometimes I'm so much still stuck in the grind. Mm -hmm. I don't really like, to be honest, like, you know, reflect on it that mm -hmm. much. Um, but there's still, I'm still at points sometimes I may struggle. Right. Um, but it's about me just staying consistent. Mm -hmm. And I always knew and I always had a vision. Anybody can become successful. I right. strongly believe in that. I think everyone has a skill set that they can monetize. Right. But it's about how consistent and persistent you're going to be to, you know, make that come to, right. you know, light. Right. So there's going to be dark days. You're going to be up. You're going to be down. But one thing I learned in basketball is like, stay neutral. Mm -hmm. Don't get too high. Don't get too low. Um, and just always, you know, just grind it out. Right. So I always knew like. I have the skill set to work with these larger corporations, mm -hmm. but I've really focused on my skill set to like build others right. so that way we can get a bigger bag right. because it's just not, hey, I'm going to hire CJ as a freelancer. Right. No, I'm going to hire a Motivision studio to get it done right. and we're going to create a set and go from there. How did you go about, to me, bro, it seemed easy. Like if I was home, I feel like I'd be here all the time. But like, mm -hmm. what was your process of building a team or yes. like people to really like buy into your vision? Yes. Um, the process was really, we started with interns. Mm -hmm. Like, and I did a lot of internships when I was in college. Yeah. So 
like I said, I started with five thousand dollars, right. and I turned around and paid the landlord and everything. I probably mm -hmm. had like a thousand dollars left. Right. So I couldn't really pay staff, but I'm like, cool. If I can, if I can get interns, build with them, mm -hmm. you know, that's probably like a fair trade off. Right. So I'm just really like learning with the interns that right. I'm getting them. <laughs> like, but you had I to just, have an incredible pitch, bro, for people to be like, no, there's something. Because when I look on your Instagram and your social media, bro, you your team always smiling mm -hmm. and like they look like at, from everybody that I've seen like mm -hmm. they're fully invested in mm -hmm. what you're trying to accomplish yeah. so like what was your pitch or like what yeah, was that it like? was I mean they seen the work yeah so a lot of people would kind of like create spaces mm -hmm. and they don't do that thing right the thing is like I do this so they seen it mm -hmm. in the beginning stages of me traveling the world with professional athletes right they seen me just chilling with artists and right. shooting and stuff like that so they could see like cool he has something that i want to do right or he's somewhere that i want to be right um to like that lower that lower scale so having that conversation and me being transparent like look i can't give you nothing right now but right. if we build together i promise you like it's going to be lit and um for, since then about five months ago mm -hmm. i just hired um like um, a staff, yeah, and we got three staff members. That's so what's now up, we bro. have three on leadership, yeah, three staff members, and then now we got that other layer of internships under them. That's fire. So in the beginning, kudos to you, bro. Appreciate it. So in the beginning, I was that founder, right, teaching interns, right. When the business started growing, I'm like, I can't stay in this. Yeah, I love my interns. I love them when they come through, but I can't stay in this. Right. So I gotta quickly at a fast pace, help these interns, get them to studio associate level. Right. So that way I can go get more of the contracts and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. And then the studio associates can help the interns. Right. And then now the the camaraderie, the community, you know, the family is even more stronger mm -hmm. because it's not like, oh, CJ did it, he's teaching me. It's like, no, bro went through the internship, right. he moved up, now he's teaching me, then it's his duty to come up. And you know that's how we rock with it. Right. So it's more of like a trust thing. You know, heading in three years now, it's like, cool. This thing is legit, and you know we just getting started. So, what is your vision for Immortal Vision Studios, bro? Like, off air we was talking about Atlanta. I live in Atlanta, moved yeah. to Atlanta from here. How in Atlanta, there's so many of these spaces yeah. all over the city, yep. and so many of them appear to be thriving. Yep. In Philly. It's only about a few, mm -hmm. and it's when you start talking about doing it on a grassroots level yeah. like you, that number is probably close to none. Yeah. So I just want to ask you, like, with all of your success thus far, like, what is the future of Immortal Vision Studios? Yeah, so that's a great question. What I see is us expanding to different cities. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, like, franchising all of our systems out. Tough. Because we operate as a one of the business models is we operate as an Airbnb for photographers and filmmakers right. so they can rent out our space. That was the first thing your intern said yep, to me. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So we do 60 plus appointments of those a month. Yeah. So I'm looking to push that out into different cities. Like you said, we work with the Foot Locker right. and all that stuff um, so they can hire our team and we can be easier, right. you know, in that region. Um, but um, we inside of a commercial warehouse right now, right, mm -hmm. in Kizenton. My goal is to purchase a building like this, mm -hmm. have about three to four floors, put us at the top or the bottom, right. um, and create smaller studios, mm -hmm. whether it's for women to do hair, lashes, right. you know, people to sell jewelry and stuff. But that's our building. Right. We own the building. We probably got like 10,000 square footage. We probably at the bottom mm -hmm. so we can do more bigger productions um, and provide access right. for other small businesses that, you know, trying to follow the model of you know what we done or you know anything that's similar but really keep it yeah. for you know black black businesses and um really fo focus on that within the community who are some of your inspirations bro when it comes to entrepreneurism and just mm -hmm. business because like throughout everything you're saying it keeps going back to this theme of like access accessibility mm -hmm. yeah for people that look like you yeah. and myself so i just want to yeah. ask you like where did that originate from and then who were some of the people 
I guess, that you've looked to for inspiration yeah. throughout your journey? Yeah. I mean, the accessibility piece always been big mm -hmm. because, like, I know what it feels like not to have access for to something. Sure. Um, I remember when I wanted to be a photographer, I was applying to, like, you know, professional sports jobs yeah. and all these crazy stuff. But, you know, it wasn't no one to teach me, like, how right. I can get in and stuff like that. So I think once I cracked the code a bit, um, I've made that, like, a, a predominant, you right. know, point to do. Um, but some of my inspos, I mean, like you said, Atlanta, like, Cam Kirk Studios yeah. um, out in Atlanta. Uh, we just did some stuff with them. They got a cool product, the cleaning kits. Mm -hmm. That was cool when we was able to like offer our consumers cleaning kits to right. wipe off their cameras and stuff. But the way that he's doing it down there is super big. And um, another inspiration of mine is um, Pharrell. I know a lot of people yeah. see him on the music side and the fashion side, but um, on the business side and the stuff that he's doing, giving back to, you know, black, entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and stuff like that is like super big too so nice that was probably like it's crazy bro two. like the more we talk like the words keep echoing in my mind like grassroots organizing social impact mm -hmm. accessibility yeah and it make me even think about like our time of like when we was in high school trying mm -hmm. to hoop yeah like the accessibility of a program like hunting park warriors yeah. like that's not the team finals yeah. that's not the team yeah. phillies yeah. of the world that was really like a grassroots yeah. organization in Philly for like, I don't want to say if you ain't have nobody, mm -hmm. like they was there, but it almost was like, it never, I would at least say, at least in our generation had the same level of prestige as yeah. some of these other notable programs mm -hmm. nationwide. So I just think that's important, but I wanted to go backwards a little bit and just try to like, see how you even got to picking up the camera, bro. So like for people looking at, I want to know more about you, mm -hmm. like, what is your story like where did you grow up what schools you went to and you know just that whole process yeah yeah so high school i graduated from dub out charter mm -hmm. um in philly they closed down played basketball there uh, i always been like creative but you know growing up in the city is like like i was like doing the fashion like in like elementary school like wearing yeah. the skinnies and stuff but i was <laughs> always like playing basketball and stuff so yeah. it was like kind of like why are you wearing the ice cream sneakers right. or like why are you wearing a skateboard sneakers yeah. and stuff like that um, when that wave was real big so i kind of like didn't want to go out my box too much right. sometimes i would like try to do it but i would be like damn i am a, i do play ball man a lot of people do know me like yeah. i don't gotta do that right so i kind of got like stuck in my environment but once i start when i went to college I was exposed to different stuff, yeah. but most importantly, dif different people. Right. And I gained the confidence to like step out of my box. Right. So in my sophomore year, um, a friend of mine let me hold a camera. I was taking photos mm -hmm. for my teammates um, that was like seniors and yeah. they getting ready for graduation. And um, I just loved it. Mm -hmm. I just loved it. I thought I was going to charge my teammates like, you know, a good $50 to yeah. have some money. But I realized like, yo, I'm not, I'm going to do it for free. I'm right. going to do it for free. And um, other people just start hitting me up. They're like, yo, can you take my photos? Yeah. For sure. And then I'm like, you know what? I got to come up with a name for this. Right. I got to do a new Instagram page. And I always call that Mortal Vision. I call it like Mortal Vision Photography. Yeah. So I was like running with that for a bit. Where, where that name come from? Um, I didn't, I always had a vision of like, I didn't want to do something with like CJ Wolf photography or like <laughs> through the lens photography, like, yeah. because I always had a vision of like this studio space, but it wasn't clear. Right. I'm like, I want something that even if cameras die or something like that, right. like, it can still mean something else. Yeah. And the mortal vision, it just pretty much means like, keep your vision immortal. Right. Your artwork that you you know, capturing right. or that you're doing. And also just in general, if you got a vision in life, maybe you want to be a doctor, mm -hmm. a lawyer, like never let that die, right. you know, let that live forever. So um, on the art side and, you know, just, you know, being persistent about, you know, your goals and dreams, yeah. that's what it really means. Got you. So keep going with your story, bro. You were saying like, you started off just like shooting for some of your teammates. Yeah, yeah, I was shooting for my teammates. Um, and they was, they was liking it, you know, and then I picked up um, marketing classes. We had yeah. to create like commercials for like Nike and like case studies and mm -hmm. stuff. And I would find myself every other class in college, if we had a group project, yeah. you got it. Like, loop me in on the back end, don't right. tell the professor. <laughs> right. um, but when it came to creativity and video production and stuff, yeah. 
I was like, yo, go to your dorms, do whatever. Like, I got, I got it. it yeah. I probably just got to find an actor or something, right. but I got everything else. Yeah. I got it. And um, when I find myself, found myself doing that, it was really something that I was like, wow. Because the only thing I f did like that was basketball, basketball. and 2K, right. <laughs> playing, at the, playing right. at the house and stuff. So um, that was like super dope to like be able to do. Um, and then I just found myself on YouTube every night, you know, searching stuff up. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, this is something I want to do. And yeah. I just kept with it. I didn't know where it was going to take me. You know, of course, I needed a job. Right. Um, when I graduated, I got a job. But I knew I wanted to be a financial advisor because it was like you can pick your own hours. Right. You know, you're an entrepreneur. You just got to, like, build your books up. You got to right. sell stuff. So I'm like, all right, this is cool. Yeah. But though, that took me a lot of lessons on, yeah. like, how I can sell, how I can you know, pitch an idea, how right. to, you know, meet people, how to network and, you know, be outside of my, outside of my shell and my right. box and stuff. So, um, that was like super cool. How do you feel like Philly, I guess like influence your creativity or like, just like your eye for like culture, fashion, media, yeah. how do you feel like the city inspired your eye or you know, yeah. like gave you some sauce? It, I mean, it's just more so like, it's gritty. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you, you stay persistent, you don't mm -hmm. stop, and you just work hard. Yeah. So I travel a lot, so I try to take every city that I like, you know, or what I like about the city and like add it into mm -hmm. like, you know, myself. But I think Philly it just teach me like the presence of like going hard and like never stopping. Yeah. Um, and then I think me being creative, able to put like the basketball into stuff, put the music into stuff, but take from different other cities and like make it like something special inside right. Philadelphia that a lot of Philadelphia may not be comfortable comfortable with yeah. or like see how it is because I know like when Skinny's first came out like when I <laughs> like other other cities was wearing them yeah other cities was wearing them but we would be late on it right and I'm like you already told you right or it's just like Solomon's now I'm like everybody or like the aces i'm like yo y'all worrying about the aces like right. the solomon's is really in right. so they're gonna go through the aces and then soon they're gonna be on the solomon's i'm right. like i already told y'all that <laughs> that was in so you saying you've been had the sauce i ain't saying i've been had it but like <laughs> i had it bro so it's like with that that part is cool because it's like it gives fully a different you know yeah type of viewpoint and i think that's pretty much that's what we're talking about with the studio too right like ain't nothing changed about here right you know we probably just didn't have some certain equipment or so stuff like that right. but the vision and the the point of what we always wanted to do always yes. been there right. and i just tell my team people are close to me all we gotta do is just trust the vision keep this main thing the main thing mm -hmm. and we're gonna be all right and um you know i'm glad that the city is starting to like pick up on this a little yeah. bit more um and like accept it mm -hmm. um but if you tell someone you know, photography studio, they're like, no, I ain't going there. Yeah. It ain't too cool to go there. But it's right. like, when you get here or you see it, they're like, oh, this is wrong. Right. It's a vibe. What piece of advice do you have for aspiring entrepreneurs, creatives, mm -hmm. like trying to like assert their vision onto the world? Um, as I'm listening to you, I feel like I'm learning too because I feel like I'm at a crossroads with my brand. Like, of course, I love media. Like, I love... I started off on YouTube doing mm -hmm. like reactions and stuff like that, vlogs. Yeah, and I felt like stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yep, I'm tapped in. It's crazy, bro. Like during the pandemic, I also came to like a, I don't want to say like a metamorphosis, but it was a time where one of my mentors, I had put a vlog out. It was me and my homies. Mm -hmm. We was drinking or whatever the case may be, and we in college, we just rapping or yeah. whatever the case may be. And she kind of checked me. It was asking me like, do do I feel like that video was a good representation of what I want my brand to be. And when I thought about it, at first I got angry. I'm like, I'm just chilling with my friends. Like we just vibing, whatever the case may be. And then as I like let what she said to me marinate, I'm like, damn, like what you put on the internet, it do stay there forever if you're not smart. So I just start thinking more cautiously, like not cautiously, I'll say consciously or like, what did I want my brand to be? Like when people thought of me, what did I want them to think about or what did I want to represent? And I just thought on my journey, bro, and a lot of it was like, you know, I constantly been like reinventing myself over all of these years. Like, just like you, bro, I always considered myself to have like this creative gene in me to where like 
when it comes to fashion, shoot, whatever. Like I always just wanted to do something different than what everybody else was doing. I always took risks. And my yeah. homies, it's funny, like even something like dyeing your hair, yeah. like they want to do the same <laughs> stuff, but they just was never bold enough to be like, all right, I'm gonna go down my hair purple, yeah. whatever the case may be. I always been the type of kid like, who cares? Like yeah. what, what they gonna say to you? Like mm -hmm. it's, it's you, if they say something, it's just like, it's whatever. Right. But um, that led me to the name like failing forward. And not that I'm like a failure in any sense, but more so in the sense of like, I feel like I tried a lot of different things to like stumble upon what I feel like I love now, which is creating content. But more specifically, I love podcasts. Mm -hmm. Eventually I want to do like short films, documentaries, mm -hmm. docu-series. I feel like that's really like my lane. When I look at people like Ava DuVernay and yeah. like some of the projects that she's put out to the world, when I look at... Issa Rae yeah. and like what she's doing. People like Dwayne and yeah. Bros, Martin. People that had their Icons. own shows and stuff. Like it's like, to me that's so that's so raw, bro. Yeah. It's like damn, like you, you had a vision. What was her name? The documentary of an awkward teenage black girl, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I know then it turned about. into Insecure. Yeah. Like that's that's fire, bro. Yeah. And like I feel like people might watch Insecure. Like it's just that's just a show. Mm -hmm. But I think that is our generation's, what's some of the shows, and Live in Color. Mm -hmm. Like, when you think about what's the classics that we got, like, how right. do we contribute back to the culture? That's a prime example. So when I look at that, um, I feel like that's in the vein of, like, what I want to do. But I was saying all that to say, like, where I'm at now is, like, okay, like, I do podcasting, but I don't want to just be limited to being a podcaster. Like, I'm trying to build a brand. And I learned this term from Nipsey. He said, like, vertical integration. Yeah. And when I hear you speaking about your brand, it started from photography, but you you didn't limit yourself with a crazy name of, like, I don't, you know how Philly yeah. is when it comes to these <laughs> names or yeah. brands and stuff like that. You gave yourself something that was, like, broad to mm -hmm. where, like, you wasn't just limited to photography and you able to scale and turn it into this. Mm -hmm. So I guess, like, when I think of my journey, I feel like I'm at the place where now it's like, all right, I'm come, I'm becoming known as like a podcast entity, mm -hmm. but how do I branch out? And when I do branch out, what does that look like? What do I really want to do? Mm -hmm. So it seems like you had a place where you kind of figured out that part of it. Now you just, it's like building a longevity and yeah. creating a wider impact. Yeah. So I say all of that to say, bro, with that in mind, like what advice do you give to aspiring entrepreneurs and creatives who like, they have a sort of a vision for a product or entity, but they trying to like, I guess like thinking about how do you scale, scale it. it? Yeah, like no, yeah, that's that's good because I just when I first started, mm -hmm. yes, this is a open space, but mm -hmm. we kept saying it crazy. Like just the other day, we hit on it. We kept saying like creative space. We mm -hmm. kept saying for all creatives, all creatives. But people are invested into me. Right. When you first start in a business, they are invested into the people the stories and the momentum you have. Right. My story is a photographer, photography. Right. CJ doing the shooting and moving around. Mm -hmm. I kind of got away from that when I started it. And I was putting a lot of, I was putting people on, I don't regret that. Right. But I was getting away from what people actually wanted to see mm. and when I say people it's your everyday person that's a fan of me right but they like I want you to go you play basketball right? right if you are that player whether you point guard center if you a playmaker even if you get a lot of assists they want to see you get a lot of assists or right. if you get buckets like bro go get, get buckets. buckets yeah like don't be assist okay cool you left with 10 assists but bro you you can drop 40s right. and 30s right so go get 40s and 30s we are coming for you for a certain reason. Mm -hmm. People are tapped in for a certain reason. So I kind of got away from that when I first opened up the studio. Because yeah. when I opened it, I'm like, all right, cool. I arrived and this is what we're going to be doing. Right. But like, I'm doing a class next Thursday. I haven't did a class inside of my own studio in about a year and a half, mm -hmm. two years. Now, I think it's power in like making, you know, people wait for a bit or something yeah. or like to show your value that you can do it. Right. But like they are going crazy about the class because like that's what they want to see. Right. So I think um, f for you um, or anyone else, 
especially with social media, there's a lot of things we can be like, damn, we should be doing this. Oh, right. they got that. Oh, this podcast on live podcasts right. now. Right. Oh, they got this sponsorship. <laughs> yeah. Like, yo, how I do all that? Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's like we got to master what our story is right we got a master podcast right you know let me get some more let me be a little bit more selfish and you know sh yes we have the studio space that people can rent right but myself as a creator let me create more stuff right, right? um so like really leaning into that and like your skills and talent and everything else going to follow i love because that, yeah. people going to start find the best thing is when people start finding ways to add value to you right so i used to pitch a lot of ideas to people mm -hmm. like yo look we can do this we can do that we can right. do that. i understand that's what you gotta do when you first starting right there's nothing better than people coming into your box and trying to figure you out right then you constantly going and giving these people ideas Facts. and that's what's kind of happening now but that's because i'm saying yo we created the space for photographers yeah well by a photographer myself and it's for photographers. Right. If you're a videographer, if you're a graphic designer, that's fine. That's cool. Mm -hmm. But this is our this is our box. Right. This is our box, and this is what we do. It sounds very similar to a piece of advice I heard from Brian. I was at Invest Fest in the A. Mm -hmm. This had to be like a couple months ago, and Lonzo was speaking. He said Brian told him, "It's the simplest thing ever," but he told him like, "Just keep the main thing, the main yeah. thing." Yeah. And he was like, you know. You know, Lonzo's story, family, family business, mm -hmm. all that type of stuff. And he was trying to focus, well, I don't even know if it was him, probably more his father, mm -hmm. was trying to focus on so many different entities of yeah. business that it took away from him, like, and his contribution to, like, the game. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, like, you Lonzo Ball, like, right. you're the star from Chino Hills Chino and Hills. UCLA. Like, making a shoe and all that yep. is great. But, like you said, we want to see you go out. And yeah make the crazy passes yeah. like magic yeah. and get a couple buckets you know what i'm saying so i think that was uh i think that was really great advice bro and i want to ask you and i think sorry to get but i think someone yeah. too um that's great you asked about my mentor like people are inspired too um rich paul is yeah. another one too because like now he's like outside and like doing the great the books and great stuff right yeah. now he's more out but like there's been like years like yeah a lot of years that he just was like behind the scenes right and i think he just was like being a great agent mm -hmm. great, getting great you know players and stuff um and then now he's able to do that yeah so like you like nipsey so like it's yeah. like a marathon right and just you know keep the main thing the main thing as a marathon and you know just keep chipping away every day yeah you know i'm glad you said that too bro because like i feel like when i thought of like my brand and like building our identity like, I always thought of Nipsey's name, like, the mm -hmm. marathon and, like, yeah. what that represents. Like, everything I, every time I think about that name, like, I always feel, like, empowered. Like, yeah. I always feel inspired. Like, anything could be going on. I just tell myself, like, yo, it's a marathon. Yep. It's not a sprint. Like, yep. when you think of a marathon, it's a long race. Yep. So I always would just calm myself in that. And when I thought of my name falling forward, it's always funny. People would be like, falling forward? Or, yeah. like, what that name mean? And I'd just be explaining to them, like... Throughout my life, bro, like, it's been so many series of events where I might have failed or I might have mm -hmm. lost or I might have been redirected or ran into a roadblock, mm -hmm. but I never let any of it deter me. Like, yep. I just kept going. Like, yep. I never let it discourage me. And I think that's empowering for kids from the city mm -hmm. that we come from, bro, because like you said, a lot of kids don't even got the courage to, like, just try something different, yeah. you know, than what might be the norm yeah. of their neighborhood or their school or whatever the entity is. So I just wanted something empowering, like Nipsey, like, yo, like, failing forward, like, meaning, like, whatever you want to do, like, just give it your best shot. Yeah. If it don't work, that don't say nothing about you or your character. Exactly. You just, you tried it, it didn't work out, exactly. on to the next thing, you, next thing you keep on exactly. moving forward. So I love Immortal Vision, I love failing forward, and I just want to ask you, bro, because I think Nipsey is also a great representation of this, how do you keep your integrity while navigating the business because we see things every day bro you talked about social media and how easy it is for people to like just do bad business yeah. unethical business scam people on yeah. their way to the top then they roll out an ebook or yeah. something like that and they yeah. further scamming people and trying to make it look like they yeah. add in real value i just want to ask you like how do you keep your integrity while taking the stairs of like building your business yeah because like i um 
I always took pride in like I think like I'm having a class on Thursday. We're mm -hmm. charging people fifty dollars for the class. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically like how to become a six figure photographer. Yeah, um, I'm gonna give them everything. Right, like, everything about softwares, everything. Yeah, um, but I feel like cringy like charging people for a class. Yeah, like it's not me. Yeah, but. I got a lot of information to give them. Right. And I got to let them know, like, you know, this is a weird thing. But we also have, like, a membership program. They come in. Certain right. people get in for free. But um, so I say that to say that never really been me, mm -hmm. you know. And I don't, it, it's nothing where I kind of got to, like, stop myself or pause right. it. Because it's, like, anything that's coming across the table that's, like, nah, this don't look right. Yeah. This person, like, it's like, nah, we're not even touching that. Yeah. And that's why it's so good to have a good team, too, because, like, we all are aligned on, like, right. you know, what's going on. And, like, the bigger you get, you know, the more spaces you get and more people going to try to test you or, yeah. you know, try to pull from you. But, you know, I, I keep God first. Yeah. You know, I stay prayed up. And um, so do my team, too. Right. You know, the leadership team and people around me. So it's like, we not... It's, it's hard to like push us yeah. off that off that you know le leverage and stuff like that. I get exactly what you're saying, bro. And um, damn, I was listening so intensely that I forgot what yeah, I was no, about all to good, say to all you. Good, all good. <laughs> but um, I just want to ask you, bro. Like when you think about your brand, what are some of your core values that like you feel like really align with you and your team? Yeah, yeah. Um, the first the first thing first is like helping people. Yeah. Um, Raheem Thompson from Chosen League, um, one of my mentors, hope I don't quote this wrong, but he always say, um, serve the people and God will serve you. Mm. Right. And Raheem does a lot of good stuff and I'm really inspired by the work that he do though. Yeah. And that's so simple. Right. Serve the people. Right. We are space. For yeah. if you have, if you're a photographer, you yeah. got to do a maternity shoot or a fashion brand, mm -hmm. just serve them. Right. Make sure we got the equipment. If we don't, that's fine. It still, you can still serve them. Right. You can teach them. You can show them how you can make the lighting easier, mm -hmm. better. Just be a great server. Right. Right. And anything I do, you know, I don't think I'll ever get too big to serve people. Yeah. And, you know, within our mission, within our business plan, it's, you know, serving people you know, serving the community that we in, serving, yeah. you know, the youth when we do different initiatives and gives back and, you know, really that stuff. So like, like that's being the- selfless. Yeah, selfless, I, that's I, like It reminds me of something I always say to my homies, my family, but like, I'm big on community. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just like, it's not a, a passion of mine. Like when you talk about being like pro-black, like I feel like I'm like, I'm yeah. really that. Yeah. So. Uh, like, being a servant of the community, I always just tell my homies, like, yo, I'm going to get my blessings on the back end. Like, they'll be like, yo, tell you, why you do this? And, like, bro, you need a charge or whatever the case may be. And I'd be like, some things, like, bro, like, I don't even feel right. Like, it's some things you just got to just do. Like, yeah. you just feel called to do. Yeah. And I remember what I was going to say, bro, but um, you touched on this. Uh, you talked about, like, you felt cringy at first, like, mm -hmm. with the idea of, like, charging people. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I've gone through that for a very long time, bro. But I think I'm finally getting to a place where I had to realize, bro, like, I'm from the city. And with the things I've done, I've developed the expertise. Like, mm -hmm. we're professionals. Yeah. Like, you're a creative. People could call you an entrepreneur, whatever the case may be. But in your space, mm -hmm. not only are you a professional, but you're a subject matter expert. Yep. And because of that, I'm sure people DM you all the time. How do you do this? How do yep. you do that? Bro, I find myself sometimes, like, it's after hours, bro, mm -hmm. 8, 9 o'clock, mm -hmm. weekends. I got a son now. I got a yeah. fiance. People feel like they so entitled to my time. And now I feel like that's what's really, like, pushing me to be like, yo, like. Yeah, I'm crazy. I don't know if I'm a creative yeah. consultant. I don't know what it is or what, but, like, I do have a level of expertise in whatever this is. So I just been thinking about things, bro, like. Yo, do I add that title to my name, like creative consultant and like host 30 minute sessions or like sessions with people that want to build something, a brand or an entity and like give them tips and gems and nuggets of like how I got to where I am to help yeah. them. Because one thing I feel like I do really, really well, bro, is like uh, when it comes to being strategic, mm -hmm. like I can look at something 
and I could get you bang, bang, bang of like how to make, yeah. you know, get yourself closer to your goal. And it's been proven, bro, with everything I did. Like, um, I got to Temple. I finished yeah. school debt free. Yeah. I went to University of Penn for my master's. That's yeah. the Ivy League school. That's your debt. Debt yep. free, bro. Yep. So it's like, that's not like an everyday thing that yeah. you hear, especially from people that come from where we yeah. come from. So I'm starting to realize, and I guess respect myself and respect my time a little bit more. But I'm getting, I'm finally getting to a point where I'm like, yo, like, I can't keep answering all these questions yeah. and like doing all this stuff for free. And I'm also getting to a point, bro, where I'm realizing certain questions are like patterns. So now I'm learning that people are asking me questions about some of the same things over and over again. Mm -hmm. So that's like. It's either eventually I do something like what you're doing, I host a class, mm -hmm. or be more intentional about the content I'm creating and make more how-tos yeah. with, you know, the commonalities of, you know, what I'm hearing people say. Exactly. So that was like, I wanted to say that I had, uh, I lost it for a second. Yeah, but, it yeah. came back but I think, I think that's important though, because like you said, we are the experts in our space. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it costs, like, like you said, you know, you got to, Fiance, you got right. a, you know, a son, right? Mm -hmm. So it costs to get me on the phone now, Facts. right? I got to take care of little man and, you know, make yeah. sure my lady happy and stuff like that. Um, and, and that's just, like, throughout growth. Yeah. Um, you know, we still young, right? right? Like, you haven't graduated. We have, I haven't been out of college for five years yet. Facts. So it's like that's part of the marathon, right. but it's just that change of, cool, it went from something we like, something we enjoy. Mm hmm and now we kind of, you know, turning that page of, yeah, we made money from it, but it's like now let's make money from everything that we're touching. Right. And I think that that, that takes a little bit of time. That takes, you know, confidence. Right. But I think that's also self, self-worth. self like You're just not jumping out there like, yeah, I'm charging people. It's yeah. like, bro, you don't know. And that's a lot much. of what we've seen. That's a lot of what we've seen, yeah. bro, and I don't agree with it. It'd be like making me so frustrated. It'd be like, yo, is that the price of like, having clout or like getting to that certain level like it just don't feel right yeah. so for me i'm gonna just i just try to stay in my lane bro yeah. keep my eyes on my paper and just know that my journey is you know for it's me me but it's meant for you and yeah. that's why i don't really like um when we when we create content here and like do different stuff mm -hmm. we don't really stay on trends yeah because trends die yep so it's like what can we create that's like for us long lasting you yeah. know what i mean and like what's us so i would just like keep that in the back of you know your head and like when you're building your brand it may take a little bit longer but you know i'm looking at it like let's create our own trend right in a sense right you know, i agree with that 100 percent. people be like yo i want to work at falling forward right on on doing stuff right for them one day you know having for sure you know kids or people your age whatever like i want to work there right because people can understand they can smell like what's fake and what's real. Facts. One thing I wanted to ask you, bro, is like, I feel like with a lot of creatives and entrepreneurs, we don't talk about like the personal side enough of like, what do you enjoy outside of like, you know, building your, building your business? Like you used to be a hooper. I don't know if mm -hmm. you still hoop, but I guess like, what are the things that you devote time and attention to outside of your business? Like when you take your head off of being the owner or CEO of Immortal Vision, like, what does happiness and peace look like for you? Yeah, um, that's hard to that's hard to um, answer right now, for because <laughs> I don't really get a lot of like me time. Yeah. Um, but I just like chilling, like yeah. for, cause like I think everything is like inspiration. So mm -hmm. even if I'm not working, I'm always working. But yeah. but I just like you know seeing new stuff, seeing cool stuff. Yeah. Um, traveling. Um, I, I like you know people. When they travel, you know, sometimes they probably want to go to the nicest parts and stuff like that. But I get my inspiration, like, when I travel, I just was in Minnesota. Like, yeah. It's like Minnesota, Midwest. Right. But I want to see the hood of Minnesota. Fact. I want to see what that looks like. like yeah. And um, it's, it always gives me, like, different inspiration. Mm -hmm. See how people talk, what they like to yep. eat, how they like to dress. Like, I really culture. enjoy that. Yeah. I really enjoy learning different cultures. Yeah. Um, Same that's, here. That's bro. what I really enjoy. Um, so right now I um, been working out lately. Mm -hmm. So um, I've been playing basketball, but the basketball circle that I'm playing basketball with yeah. changed. Yeah. Um, but that's still a whole different it. culture. Yeah, I still got it, bro. <laughs> I still got it, bro. I still got it, man. You might have to hoop, sure. bro. It's like riding a bike. Yeah. It's like riding a bike. You just 
now I just got to make sure, you know, I take care of my body, you know, right. stretching and all that stuff. But What's something, bro, that has excited you lately? Like, it could be, like, a piece of fashion, a piece of content, an artist that was refreshing to your ear. Like, what are, what's something that excited you lately? Lately, what excited me? Um, when Pharrell became career director at Louis. That's fire. Yeah. Like, it's like, damn. Like, it happened. Yeah. Was that something that, like, you felt was, like, long overdue or, like? Um, in a sense. Yeah. In a sense. Like, he's an icon. Like, that's, like, that's my inspiration, mm -hmm. you know? And he does so much for, like, the um, black entrepreneurs. Too, yeah. You know? Um, you got a thing called Black Ambition. Mm -hmm. um, grant and, you know, giving money and opportunities and mentorship. Yeah. You know, to black entrepreneurs and... You know, just seeing that, I'm like, and being a fan of his music, being a fan of, like, his fashion, everything, mm -hmm. is just, like, that's fire. Like, yeah. from music to fashion to creative directing to, you know, giving back, yeah. so, social impacts. It's, it's, just, it's just amazing. One thing I like that you said earlier, and it kind of makes me think about Pharrell, is, like, you said since you've been operating this entity of Immortal Vision, like nothing really changed stylistically, mm -hmm. like or y'all approach to how y'all do this or how y'all run this, yeah. like that's been the same. And when I look at Pharrell, like his touch or his presence or even like the sound of like his music, mm -hmm. no matter who he working with, yeah. it's always that Pharrell sound. Yeah. Like one of my favorite songs that he produces, uh, what's it on Twenty Minutes, I think, yeah, by Uzi. Yeah, yeah Uzi. Yeah. That joint just crazy, yeah. but yeah. it got that like Pharrell sound yeah, it got to the it. Four beat drop. Yeah, yeah. so I yeah. love that yeah. he like. Yeah. I could see that in you. I could yeah. see the inspiration in you. But um, I think for myself, bro, lately, like, it's been like music. that has been like what I've been like getting that inspiration from. So like, I play the game a lot now. And okay. I got some young boys that like, my youngest I play the game with, they've been like putting me on to like a lot of like underground artists. Yeah. Cause I feel like a lot of the mainstream artists, bro, it's like, it's like the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, kind of like getting tired of it. So like, I've been listening to like it's an artist named Coaches. He's from um, Florida. I, I you heard, heard of him. him. I heard of him. He's nice. Like I like him. I like his style of music. I've been listening to like um, who else? They be having me listen to Yeet, people like that. Yeah. But I would say like music is definitely an area where I feel like I've been like um, it's a piece of culture that I feel like has really been like fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, bro, I would say like it's been hard to come across like. I don't know. I don't feel like much be like moving me unless yeah. it's something that's really like it gotta be like iconic. different. Something super iconic. Yeah. No, for sure, for sure. And another thing that's been exciting me too is yeah. like the basketball space. Yeah. On like women's basketball mm -hmm. too. Like you got some people breaking some crazy records. For sure. Records for sure. On the girl at USC, yep. and Iowa and stuff. I was just showing um, my girl um, some Nike campaigns that they was running yep. on there was like fire too. I was just showing my girl um, the Sabrina ones. Yeah, like, I, I wanted. I told her I was like, "Baby, I want a pair of these yeah. joints." And I was showing her. I'm like, "These joints, they hard." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nike was on YouTube legit. watching the girls. Uh, what's the girl name from uh, Caitlin Clark? Mm -hmm. We was watching her highlights. I had her watching Juju from USC. Yeah. My girl was like, "She's like, they nice for yeah. real." Yeah, these girls, they definitely on something. Um, but lastly, bro, like I enjoyed this conversation so much. Those was pretty much like the majority of the questions I had. I feel like people got to know you personally, mm -hmm. uh, professionally, creatively. I hope so. That's the whole point of podcasting. Yeah, I for sure. So. That's the one, that's my job. I'm trying to open up more, you know, but sometimes it's hard to talk about myself. Yeah. I know? feel like you did a great job, bro. I feel like we Thank you. we touched on a lot of different things, so I feel like people was able to understand like who you are on like a, a core level, yeah. like what what matters to you. Yeah. But something I ask all my guests, bro, at the end of the episodes is, uh, what's your personal definition of failure? Um, not accomplishing yeah. the goal that you set out, but learning something from it. Mm. That's a bar. That's a bar. Not accomplishing the goal that you set out, but learning something from it. That's hard. So I wanted to, let's say, get our team right. We try to get a hundred studio rentals a, a, a month. Yeah. Let's get a hundred of them. Right. We got sixty. Cool. What did we learn? At one point, you thought you wanted to be a financial advisor. You ended up being a creative savant, creative professional. 
That's it right there. That's a perfect embodiment of failing forward. Failing forward. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate your time. Let people know like how they could follow you, how they could support you, what you got coming up. Yeah, um, I ain't hard to find. CJ X Wolf on social platforms, CJ X Wolf my website. Mm-hmm. I don't really show much of my photography work on my Instagram. Um, but if you go on my website, my portfolio is there. So I encourage people to check that out. People be forgetting that I do photography. Yeah. So like cjxwolf.com, um, immortalvisionstudio.com. Um, subscribe to our email list. We do a lot of cool stuff and a lot of cool emails and have a lot of educational classes, a lot of cool meetups and yeah. stuff like that um, for the culture. And um, yeah, we're here in Kensington. We're here in Philly, but we're really everywhere. Um, we got some exciting stuff to um, put out. Right. We'll be putting out where we be taking our studio to different cities and different parts of the city um, this summer and this spring. So I'm excited for that. So we'll be around, we'll be outside and, you know, not just leaving it inside the studio, but meeting people where they are. Yeah. So for y'all, this might be your first time seeing me. Uh, y'all can follow me at I am Tay Loso. Uh, follow the podcast page at FallingForward.co. Uh, we got, got a YouTube channel. We on all of the streaming platforms. So tap in with us, you know, go back into the episodes. You might find something that you like or is interesting to you. But other than that, you know, I just ask y'all to keep supporting us and what we're doing. I appreciate y'all for tapping in with us. Thank you for your time, bro. Yes, appreciate it's amazing. Conversations yes, of them and things. Investing all our dollars and hoping that freedom reigns. It's hard being us, but the talents cover the pain. Make it to the lead, but we still don't own the game. Way too many souls are tainted behind the fame. The parties in private mansions, they exchange some drinks. Corrupt the things you think. Your life change in a blanket and nothing seems to say. All these curses, your value to your spouse is measured by some purses. Preach religion to our youth and make them think it's working. Really-